Teal, T-E-E-L, Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice. That's it. T-E-E-L. <laughs> Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, brings you the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. <laughs> Remember, friends, for beautiful smiles, it's T-E-E-L, Teal. And just for laughs, it's R-I-L-E-Y, Riley, in the life of Riley. Chester A. Riley is a loving husband and father, a good man with a rivet gun, but not even his best friends consider him as a creative artist. The other evening, however, Riley's daughter Babs was practicing the piano when her father came home with a surprising bit of news. Oh, oh, hello, Daddy. Hiya, Pop. Hello, kids. Uh, listen, Babs, if a fella had a tune in his brain, could you put it on paper? Oh, don't tell me you're thinking of writing a song. Oh, I, I already done it. On the level, Pa? Yeah. Well, since when are you interested in music? Well, it, it started last night. Uh, of course, for a long time I've been hearing noises in my head. <laughs> but I thought it was just the effects of three years of riveting. Well, what happened last night? I'll tell you what. Yours truly was appointed official songwriter of my lodge, the BPLA. Oh, the BPLA. Watch your tone, Junior, when you mention the Brooklyn Patriots of Los Angeles. <laughs> They're all fine fellas. All right, Daddy, now what's your song about? Well, it's about friendship. Uh, about how us Lodge brothers love each one another. It's called, Give the Boys Your Great Big Hand. Oh, brother. Say, that's a good title, too. <laughs> Come on, I'll pick it out on the piano, and Babs, you write down the notes on something, huh? Oh, okay. We can use this music paper here on the piano. Yeah. Wait a minute. There, there's some notes on this paper already. Oh, that's, that's what I was practicing when you came in. That hymn to the sun, Rimsky Korsakoff. Hymn to the sun, Rimsky's Korsakoff? <laughs> that, that title don't make sense. Who wrote it? Rimsky Korsakoff. It's a classic. I copied it today in music class. Oh. Well, here's a clean sheet of music paper, Babs. Let's get going. Uh, right up at the top, Words, Music, and Notes by Chester A. Riley. All right, Daddy. Yeah, j just write down what I play. opinion. Don't, don't pull no punches. Well, uh... Great, huh? Uh, well... Uh, don't say it, Babsy. It might turn my head. <laughs> oh, Riley, Babs. There's your mother. Will she be surprised? Oh, here you are. I'm so glad. I just heard the most wonderful news. What is it, Mother? Peg, you mean you heard about me, Babs? You know, I just met your music teacher, Miss Abernathy, and she said you're going to get a scholarship at the conservatory. Oh, Mother, oh, really? Oh, no. All this excitement just because your daughter is getting a scholarship. Uh, 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 scholarship! Babs! My daughter! Our daughter, Riley. Oh, isn't it wonderful? It's terrific! Babs, kiss your old mother. I mean, me. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh, thanks, Daddy. But, Mother, are you sure? Well, of course, it isn't definite yet. But Mrs. Worthington is interested in you, Babs. Well, who is this Mrs. Worthington? Oh, she's a very wealthy society lady. She gives the scholarships. And she's coming here tomorrow night to hear Babs play. What oh, scholarship? I can hardly believe it. I never thought I was that good. Oh, well, why not, Babsy? I'm a whiz at the piano. <laughs> and you inherited my fingers, nails and all. <laughs> Tonight's the big night, huh, Babs? Uh, when does Mrs. Worthington get here? Not until nine. 
Oh, oh, Daddy, where's Rimsky Korsakoff? Him to the sign. Oh, oh, there it is. It, it blew off on the floor with Riley's Give the Boys Your Great Big Hand. Well, that's a fine place for it, on the floor. No, 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 no. Wait, Betsy. I don't want you lifting heavy paper with them valuable fingers. You let me pick it up, and you go help your mother wash the dishes. <laughs> dishes. Now I've got to practice. Riley? Bev, she's here. Mrs. Worthington. What? Already? Her limousine just stopped in front of the house. Oh, but, but she's too early. We're not even dressed. Well, now, now, now don't worry. You, you, you two doll yourself up. I'll entertain her. After all, the lady and I both got something common. Music. Oh, well, Daddy, you will be careful. Be very polite, Riley. Please. Listen, Peg, I've talked to strange women before. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be married now. <laughs> My own daughter. A scholarship. I'd better turn the class on for this old gal. Ah, good evening, madam. How do you do? <laughs> Does Barbara Riley live here? Uh, yes, ma'am, but I ain't her. I mean, I mean I'm her father. Uh, come in, will you? Uh, uh, that is, won't you? Thank you. Uh, Babs will be with you in a minute. Uh, meanwhile, uh, why don't you squat? I mean, I mean, uh, sit down. <laughs> Thank you. It's swell of you to take this interest in my daughter's music. Ah, yes. My whole life is dedicated to music. I find glorious melodies so peaceful, so relaxing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, like the saying goes, music soothes the savage beast. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Why? What did you do? <laughs> I, uh, I do hope your daughter won't be long. Oh, she's just putting on some glad rigs. That uh, ain't we, uh, I, I mean, aren't we met someplace before? <laughs> I'm positive we haven't. Well, your face bothers me. I mean, I mean, it's funny. I mean, it's so familiar. We have never met before. Will your daughter be much longer? Oh, no, she, she'll be here soon. And wait, you hear her talent. Uh, confidentially, she gets it from me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I suppose you play by ear. No, no, no tricks. Just use my hands. <laughs> got to do is hear a piece of music once and it sticks in my head like a footprint in concrete. Mr. Riley, would you please ask your daughter Oh, yeah, 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 I'll go get her. And while I'm gone, you might take a squint at that new song I just composed. It's, it's on top of the piano. <laughs> he composed. I can imagine the sort of music that creature would write. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Why, it's lovely. What melody. Why, the creature has talent. Mm -hmm. Oh, simply beautiful. Why, the man who wrote this is a genius. Oh, oh, Mrs. Worthington, I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. Yes, but we didn't expect you until now. Oh, please, please, don't apologize. I've just made the most exciting discovery. You have a musical virtuoso in the family. You see, Bibbs, and she ain't even heard you play yet. Oh, I don't mean her, Mr. Riley. I mean you. <laughs> I've just seen his latest composition. Magnificent! Uh, well, of course, Mrs. Worthington, if you say so. Uh, but Babs is already not Ah, uh, maestro. Huh? <laughs> Let me feel those hands. Those wonderful hands. Strong, yet so sensitive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they get that way from pitching horseshoes. Uh, uh, Mrs. Worthington, now, how about hearing Bev's play for that scholarship, huh? Yes, I was going to play... Oh, I don't have to hear her play. How could she help but be brilliant with you for her father? Well, you ain't getting me into an argument. <laughs> oh, 
it will be a privilege to give her the scholarship. Oh, that's great. You see, Peg, I put it over. My song did it. Oh, that's wonderful, Mrs. Worthington. Oh, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, don't thank me. Thank your father, Mr. Riley. Mm -hmm. I want to give your composition to the world. You shall play it for us uh, next Sunday. I'm giving a musical. A musical? Well, well Sundays I usually sleep. Oh, no, I, I don't think Riley ought to. Now, now, Maestro. If I'm going to help with your daughter's scholarship. Mrs. Worthington, you sold me. I'll play my head off. Oh, wonderful. And now I must fly. So much to do. Oh, by this time next week, Mr. Riley, you will have found your place in the sun. A bien <laughs> What does she mean, place in the sun? Do I have to take her swimming at Ocean Park? <laughs> Riley, you can't go through with this, this concert. Well, I'm only doing this to help Babs. Mrs. Worthington's liable to get sore if she don't give me to the world. Oh, you'll ruin everything. And if you do, you'll suffer for it. Us artists got to expect to suffer. It's the price we pay for being abnormal. <laughs> but your song, Daddy, you can hardly play it. Oh, don't worry. I'll practice up and... And I'm going to get the BPLA trio to do a little harmonizing. Oh, no, no, no. Not those men from your lodge. Why not? We, we, we may not be much to look at, but when we open our mouths and our sweet voices ring out, it's just like the old saying, pearls coming out of swine. <laughs> Peg, I'm on next right after this fruit solo. And my trio ain't here yet. I'm worried. You're worried? Yeah. I haven't slept for three nights thinking of this. Daddy, there's still time to back out. Please, Daddy, for my sake. But, darling, I told you I'm doing this for your sake. If I back out now, she'll get sore and won't give you that scholarship. Hey, Riley, we're here. Oh, hello, Gillis. Hello, Ike. Hiya, Riley. You're just in time, boys. For heaven's sake. Hey, what are you men wearing? Our oh, marching uniforms. Being this is a high-class clam bake, we thought we'd dress for the occasion. Yeah. How do you like these brass buttons? Biggest saucers, ain't they? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know, fellas. You, you look a little flashy. Those red shirts you got on. The... Oh, hey, it's our turn. We're all ready. We're all ready. Now, Mr. Riley, as soon as I... Ad... Mercy, what are these firemen doing here? <laughs> Oh, they ain't firemen. Those two are my trio. Oh. Oh, a choral arrangement. Yeah. Oh, what a delightful surprise. Now, I'll announce you first, and then you come in. Oh, and guess who's in the audience? Dean Taylor. Well, get ready now. Hey, Riley, who'd yeah. you say was in the audience? Dean Taylor. Oh. I'm glad it ain't our Taylor. We still owe him for these uniforms. <laughs> I have tried in my humble way to bring you the very best in music. Tonight I present a thrilling new composition to be played by its brilliant composer, whom I discovered. Ladies and gentlemen, my protege, Senior Chester A. Riley. Well, okay, fellas. Okay, this is it. Ready? A one... And a two in sunny California, yay. One day I joined BPLA. Twas then I knew what friendship meant when the boys to me these words did say. Oh. I think I hear somebody laughing. Take a look. See if my pants are split. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you're an imposter. You're a mountebank, a charlatan. Oh, I ain't that good. <laughs> but I'll play an encore. Encore? Get out of this house and take your horrible music with you. But you, you, you like my song. Not that song. The song I liked went, la-dee-da-da. -da. 
But that's by Rimsky Korsakoff. Any dumb cluck knows that. By Rimsky Korsakoff? Yeah. Oh, my heavens. I didn't know. Oh, how do you laughing stop? Uh, look, th- this won't make no difference to Babs' scholarship, will it? Scholarship? You don't think I'd spend my money on the offspring of a stupid oaf? Now get out. Oh. Oh. All right, I'm going. But I'll get even with you and your stuck-up music lovers. Just for this, I'm never going to write another song. <laughs> now see what you've done. <laughs> Just brought you the first act of the life of Riley, and we'll return to Riley in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Ken Carpenter. Next time you need a dentifrice, remember this. Only teal of all leading dentifrices protects your teeth from a certain type of cavity. You see, out of every ten adults, eight have receding gums. And when gums recede, parts of your teeth are exposed, which are 25 times softer than tooth enamel. Now, those softer parts are easily damaged by daily brushings, with toothpaste or powder containing harsh abrasives. So chances are 8 in 10, you're risking those ground-in cavities daily, unless the dentifrice you use contains no such abrasives. Only teal of all leading dentifrices cleans teeth without abrasives, cleans with a patented ingredient, protects teeth from such cavities as no other leading dentifrice can. The teal way takes one extra minute a week, makes teeth look their best safely. Follow directions on the package. And remember, large family-sized teal saves money. T-E-E-L, teal. The foamy, refreshing liquid dentifrice. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. When Mrs. Patron mistook rimsky korsakovs hymn to the sun for a composition by Riley... She hailed him as a musical genius. O'Reilly thought she was praising his large song. And when O'Reilly sang said corny song at a swanky musicale, well, the result was fiasco. Now, Mrs. W. has canceled the scholarship she promised Riley's daughter. Oh, hello, Dumplin'. Here you are. Uh, Dumplin', I said hello. I said hello. I'm not speaking to you. But Dumplin'... I warned you not to play at that musicale. And now that you've ruined Babs' scholarship, I hope you're satisfied. Oh, come on, Dumplin'. So I was wrong for once. <laughs> but I'll make it up to you. Uh, would you like me to wash the dishes for you? Would you like me to wax the floors? I got my pay envelope today. Give it to me. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Dumplin'. Here. Uh, would you like me to take you to the movies tonight? Okay, don't talk. From now on, I limit my conversation to my children. Who's there? Oh, hello, Babs. Hello, Mother. Oh, hello, dear. You feeling better? Weren't you feeling good, Babsy? I feel better now, Mother. Did you take an aspirin? You got a headache, Babsy? Yes, my head's a little better, Mother. Why do you keep calling me Mother. <laughs> Oh, I get it. You too. Oh, come on, Babs. Don't be like that. Talk to me. Say something. Please don't ever speak to me again, Father. That's better. Oh, oh come on, Babs, darling. Do you feel like a movie, band? I don't mind. Oh, that's more like it. Wait, I'll get my hat. I'm ready, Mother. All right, then let's go, dear. But wait, I ain't got my hat yet. I'll be back in just a second. Peg, Babs, wait. Oh... Uh, Oh, let him go. I don't care. That snooty Mrs. Worthington. She got me into this. I wish I could remember where I seen her face before. Oh, Junior's home. Well, I still got my son to talk to. Hello, Junior. Hello, Pop. Goodbye, Pop. <laughs> okay. I don't need any of my family to talk to. From now on, I'm talking to myself. At least both of us is friends. <laughs> Open up, Riley. It is I, Digby O'Dell. Who? Digby O'Dell, the friend the undertaker. Uh, 
Don't you know me? Oh, excuse me, Digger. I ain't used to the sound of a human voice. <laughs> Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. I feel awful, Digger. I don't think a human being could be any lower than I am right now. I've seen them lower. <laughs> Much lower. I heard about your musical fiasco, Riley. Yeah, everybody did, Digger. Now my own family won't talk to me. You don't know what it means to keep talking to people and not get any answer. Don't I? <laughs> But let's not talk shop. I'm here to cheer you up. You're a real friend, Digger. And why not? I like being friends. Ah, friends. Playing catch on the corner lots. Double dates on Saturday night. Exchanging ties on Christmas Day. I adore friends. They're so gay. <laughs> Yeah, we, we've been friends a long time, Digger. You you sure were a swell kid. Yes, I was just as much fun then as I am now. <laughs> Remember the old days, Riley? That time at Coney Island when I buried you in the sand? Yeah. Yeah, but you overdid it a little. They had to dig down six feet till they found me. Remember those feasts at Joe McArdle's greasy grotto? Yeah. Oh, what fun we had. Flirting with that peroxide blonde waitress. Yeah, yeah, I remember her. She, she was such a... Digger. What's wrong, right? That's where I seen her. Who? Mrs. Worthington. She was the waitress. You mean the social Mrs. Worthington? Sociable, my eye. She's a phony. Her real name is Mabel Hammerschlager. <laughs> oh, I got her. Now I can make her give Fed that scholarship. Riley, are you positive? In my profession, we have a say. Before you go to work, make sure you're on solid ground. <laughs> sure, I'm sure. And I got a way to prove it. Now I got that snooty dame right where I want her. In the hollow of my head. I'm sorry, sir, but you cannot see Mrs. Worthington now. But I've got to see her. Well, it's impossible. She's about to announce the winners of the scholarship. Oh, then I'm just in time. Out of my way. Now, just a moment. Have you a ticket? You see this fist? That's my ticket. Uh... This way, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Riley, why did you drag us here? If Mrs. Worthington sees us, she'll... I tell you, she's a phony. I used to know her when she was a waitress in a hash joint. Mabel Hammerschlager. Riley, you're crazy. Hey, you think I'm crazy, all right? I'll prove it. Come on. And so I feel that it's the duty of our social leaders to advance the cultural development of our fair city. And now, before I announce the names of the winners of the Worthington Scholarship, are there any questions? Hey, Mabel, two post eggs on toast. Adam and Eve on a rib. Oh. Oh. What did I tell you? What did I tell you, Peg? <laughs> it's Mabel. Why, why, how dare you come in here? Get out. Come off it, Mabel. You're among friends. How dare you call me Mabel? Pardon me, Miss Hammerschlager. What? Why, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't I? Listen, we used to go swimming together at Coney Island. Haven't you got a mole on your... Riley! <laughs> on her shoulder. Get out. Get... No. No, don't go. I am, Mabel. Mm. But you won't say nothing, will you? Please don't. Well, what I say depends on what you say when you get back in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Well, hop to it. Remember, never keep the customers waiting, Mabel. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> forgive the interruption, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> A little joke. <laughs> well, as I was saying, <laughs> the first Worthington scholarship goes to, uh, 
Barbara O'Reilly. Oh, I got it. Oh, Daddy, you're wonderful. Isn't he wonderful, Mother? He must be if I stood him for 17 years. <laughs> but, honest, Riley, you ought to be ashamed. Why, you practically blackmailed Mrs. Worthington. So what? <laughs> you once blackmailed me, didn't you? <laughs> you blackmailed me into marrying you. I blackmailed you? Well, sure. When I was courting you. You threatened to stop paying the installments on the engagement ring I gave you. <laughs> Remember, Teal protects teeth from cavities of the gum line. Cavities ground in by daily use of toothpastes or powders containing harsh abrasives. Teal cleans teeth without abrasives, protects teeth from such damage. Ask for T-E-E-L, Teal, the liquid dentifrice. And now a word from the star of our show, the man who makes Riley so smiley, William Bendix. Folks... War or no war, one fight always goes on. The fight against sickness, poverty, plague, and epidemic. The Red Cross needs every cent we can contribute. And we need the Red Cross. So let's give that others may live. Good night. invite you to be their guest next week to hear the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. William Bendix appears by arrangement with Hal Roach. The Life of Riley is produced for Teal by Irving Brecker and is directed by Don Bernard. Music by Lou Kozlov. Tonight's cast included Paula Winslow, Sharon Douglas, Scotty Beckett, John Brown, and B. Benaderet. This is Ken Carpenter on behalf of Teal inviting you to listen again next week. And remember, for laughs, it's R-I-L-E-Y Riley. And for lovely smiles, it's T-E-E-L Teal. Teal, the amazing liquid dentifrice, protects teeth beautifully. It's a washing miracle for silk, nylon, woolen, dishes. What are you talking about? Dreft. I'll spell it. D-R-E-F-T, dreft. Yes, ladies, and Dreft spells faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. That's true. Take lingerie, for example. Why, Dreft keeps my dainty underthings fresher and brighter than even expensive soap flakes. Right. You see, Dreft is different from soap. Dreft's rich suds rinse clean and clear. They simply can't leave any sticky deposit the way all soaps do. No wonder Dreft keeps lingerie, stockings, new woolens prettier and brighter far longer than any soap could ever do. With Dreft, there's no soap fading. Yes, and for washing dishes, Dreft is just unbelievable. Why, Dreft makes my dishes shine even without wiping. Every woman knows how dishes washed with soap dry with a greasy film, unless you polish them. Well, my Dreft wash dishes drain dry, bright and sparkling. Even glasses sparkle without touching a towel to them. Yes, ladies. Decide now to open up this bright new world of beauty for all your nice things. For your fine washables, for your dishes. So get Dreft in the bright green package. Dreft, Procter & Gamble's amazing suds discovery that gives you faster, brighter, safer cleaning than any suds before in history. That's D-R-E-F-T, Dreft. Next time you shop, get Dreft. Remember, for laughs, it's the life of Riley every week at this same time. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.